We bought the cheapest Torag we could find. This is it. This is the new ride. I highly doubt it's gonna work, but go ahead and try it. That's definitely an Egatron, Captain. It's like it wants to, sort of. A little throttle. Oh. oh, keep cranking once it fires. It fired there. Alright, don't let it die. There's some smoke coming out the back. The classic case of a vehicle that's too big for the trailer. It looks like the trailer ramps aren't gonna hit. Oh, <laughs> that, one, that one fell down. But they're not gonna hit. Okay. Okay, so our new Touareg. Uh, picked up a 2004 Touareg. The reason why we got this vehicle, towing vehicle to allow us to tow our trailer whenever we need to. Combination of that and then possibly a new project. So we may be doing some other videos around this vehicle off-road, possibly some other projects in the future with this, which we will be going into at a later time. Because right now this car doesn't run properly and is broken. So I was looking for a Touareg on Facebook Marketplace. Really a lot of the Touaregs you'll see on Facebook Marketplace are going to have a wide range of price. Touaregs are notorious for being problematic, especially in the early years, 03, 04, 05. While that is somewhat deserved initially, most of those issues got resolved, but it has driven down the value of them overall. These cars will be out there anywhere from, let's say, three to $5,000 and that is in a running condition as opposed to this one which we purchased which was not in running condition so this car i found on facebook marketplace it was listed at twenty five hundred dollars and was about three hours away from us and listed that it needed a timing chain now this engine has two hundred and one thousand miles that's pretty high mileage and needing a timing chain is a concern now this is something that was at a place that was not specialized in Volkswagen Audi. It's a more rural area where I suspect they probably don't have a lot of options for people who are specialized in particular models like that. So I suspected it probably needs a timing chain adjuster based on the information that I saw listed there. Worst case scenario is this thing would have jumped time and it needs an engine. So we looked at, I looked at some costs of what we can get a 4.2 V8 for if we needed one and you can just find them on eBay straight out for about a grand. So. Even worst case scenario with this car, you have to buy an engine, it's about a thousand bucks. So I was willing to take the gamble. We rolled out there, we picked this thing up. We did get this woman down. Uh, we paid $12.50 for this car. Now this car, while it does have some problems and it is gonna be costly to fix them, it is actually a very nice car overall on the outside. Outside, this thing is almost immaculate, I would say, for a 2004 vehicle, especially a car with that much mileage. The one important note about a Touareg like this that you're purchasing is it's safe to assume with a Touareg that Three things are probably true if you're buying a V8 Touareg, even if it's running. It probably needs a timing belt, it probably needs brakes, and it probably needs tires. All of those are extremely expensive, which is something that you should be aware of whenever you're purchasing one of these. The V8 Touareg engine actually doesn't have a timing chain here. It's located on the cam chain adjuster. So this is a timing belt. You have chains here and then here on the cam adjusters themselves. It's basically a chain that keeps the camshafts riding together. So that's what they were saying. It needs a cam chain. That's almost guaranteed to not be the case unless it's snapped, in which case it's going to bend the valves and need probably an engine. I suspect this thing almost certainly does not have a broken cam chain. It just needs a cam chain adjuster. They are somewhat, I wouldn't say common to go bad. They can go bad. When they do go bad, it's a very expensive fix. A factory one's about 800 bucks. Uh, an aftermarket one's about 250 bucks. Either way, it's still gonna be expensive. Uh, and it's nine hours labor because you have to take apart all the time belt stuff to get to it anyway. Now, looking over the cosmetics of this car, first thing that we noticed was how nice the headlights are. Now, I can guarantee you these are the original headlights or at least factory headlights and these have definitely been refinished before. There's no way this vehicle would have made it 200,000 miles with the headlights being this clear. So it looks like it has some kind of clear coat over top of it. So they probably brought it down to where it's clear and then put a clear coat over top of it. That can be done a couple times on the vehicle. So, uh, but these look great for what they are, especially for the vehicle. Now other cosmetic stuff that's wrong, it's missing this headlight washer cap. It has a crack right here in the grill. 
but again, 200,000 miles, you're gonna expect the paint to be messed up in some of these spots, just rock chips and general stuff. I'm really majorly concerned more about major damage and, and accidents and scuffs and things like that. There does appear to be a scuff right here that may or may not buff out. This side of it looks beautiful with only just basic minor scratches. And the same on this side with only a few minor scrapes along the way. The rear also looks great. They have a, a sill protection plate, which is probably protected this uh, bumper cover here. And then it is missing the cap and then also the latch assembly for the glass because Tori glasses actually separate from the hatch itself that you can open it up. So we'll have to get something for that. Now with the factory roof bars, they have locks. Now we didn't get a key with this. These have numbers on the lock cylinders themselves. Unfortunately, it looks like all the keys have been discontinued so we can only buy them as a set. So we'll have to figure out a way to get these out of here and then swap to a completely new set of lock cylinders. Now all the wheels and tires on this, the wheels don't have any curbing of any major kind shouldn't because it's a truck the tires were actually had a little bit of tread life on both front and rear but this one has a plug in a place where plugs are not supposed to be now the reason why you don't put plugs in sidewalls of cars is because this is a point where the tire can flex and it's likely to potentially create an issue where this thing will blow out so uh, plugs in the sidewalls or even near sidewalls of tires are something that oftentimes and now I think a lot of places don't even plug tires anymore. They only patch them because of a lot of safety liabilities around people blowing out stuff uh, with plugs or any type of safety concerns around them. Toregs are notorious for this issue where everything starts peeling. A lot of the soft touch stuff in this era, the 2004-ish era for Volkswagen and Audi had this issue. So a lot of the soft touch stuff is peeling. Now we found some options to maybe resolve this. So make sure you check out some of the future videos that we're gonna do around fixing this issue with the peeling. So aesthetically, that is probably the biggest eyesore around this. Nothing is majorly broken with this except for we have the wind mirror button is completely snapped off and there is a cracked wood grain trim here. Other than that, all the other things appear to be functioning and working, including the armrest. The door pull is missing. Uh, it appears as though someone must have swung on this like a monkey uh, because this thing actually bolts on and should be pretty strong and our window switches are also peeling as we would expect. Now the only other major interior flaw other than the ones we've covered thus far as you can see is our, our finely carved wood stick that we have pulling up our glove box. So we may be able to repair this. It's unsure this latch is not working properly and we may be able to repair it. If not, we will have to replace it. Now in the back of the vehicle, everything looks pretty good. Few things, soft touch is peeling like it is in the front. And one good thing is our sunshades in the rear all work and are functioning and are unbroken like you wouldn't find in most of these vehicles. Now the headliner is dropping in the rear, so we will have to have somebody repair that. Most likely I would have an upholstery guy uh, replace this because otherwise you're gonna, we can replace the headliner, but that thing's gonna be insanely expensive for this car. Now we were gonna show you the trunk, but we realized that the battery's dead. So we have to jump this thing to get the trunk open. So since the battery on Torags is underneath the driver's side seat, which we will be replacing the battery with a DIY, we're gonna take these jump posts. So there's a positive terminal here, a negative terminal there, and then we're gonna turn on our jump box to get this thing going. Hey, it opens. Are you surprised? Yes. I mean, there's a chance the trunk latch didn't work. There's some goodies in the trunk. Our engine trims are in here. So this thing is gonna be completely sweet looking when we're done. Let's see, is it a spare here? There it is. Ooh, it's leaking. Is it? Yeah, some water just fell down. Nice. Where did it fall from now? It'd be like, oh, it's a little bit damp. Uh, this is wet, for sure. So we do have a water leak of some kind that appears to be from the rear. So most likely when you have a water leak, it's gonna be from the sunroof drains. That's what I'm going to assume. It's probably safe to assume that's the case. I'm gonna leave that out because it's soaking wet. I do not want to enhance our moisture issue by allowing that to soak. Okay, so after looking at our vehicle, we do have a, a couple things that we need to address. Uh, I still need to inspect the brakes, but we do have an oil leak located in this general area. This is where the steering rack is. Uh, we definitely have something going on. This is either an oil leak or a power steering leak. When we inspect the engine further, we'll determine if we have a leak coming from there. But nothing major that I'm concerned about that I'm looking at. 
and uh, everything here looks pretty good. Okay, so the brakes on this vehicle in the front, you can see there's quite a bit of pad material left there, which are good here. So let's check out the rear. And on the rear, we also have a fair amount of pad material left there as well. So brakes on this car are all good. Okay, so this vehicle has had some extensive history that we do have. So let's talk about this real quick, just to go over some of the stuff that we know has been done to this vehicle. She spent quite a bit of money repairing this vehicle, and that's oftentimes a lot of times why people surrender with these vehicles is because they just get pounded into the ground with big expenses around repairs. Things like the prop shaft, when you're talking about, I think it's five, six hours labor, plus $1,100 for the drive shaft, plus the associated parts with it. That alone is a $2,000 roughly repair, a little bit less. Recall for a fuel pump related issue at a dealer, an intake diaphragm done, leaking power steering hose, mass airflow sensor, heater core hoses, an intake manifold gasket set, throttle body gasket set, intake manifold linkage, front and lower control arm, a transfer case seal in the rear as well. That was a pretty significant repair bill she had right there. Both of the in-tank fuel pumps were replaced. That stuff adds up awfully fast. So some of the stuff that was done on this vehicle was fairly labor intensive. So we're talking about bills for a thousands and thousands of dollars, uh, which can always be tough, which is why vehicles like this may not be the best choice for everybody. Uh, but if you are capable of working on your own stuff and you are looking for uh, a challenge, there's a lot of opportunity to purchase a vehicle like this that's in good shape, that was taken care of, that still has life left, and you can kind of revive it back and drive it as a great vehicle. Okay, so we're gonna go through some of the faults in this vehicle. We don't have a list of all the faults because our battery died while we were scanning, but we do have the key ones that we're gonna be looking at. So this vehicle does have uh, fault codes for misfires. It has a crankshaft position, engine speed, correlation fault. Now, uh, oftentimes in a lot of vehicles, that means that the engine has jumped time. Based on the way it runs, it's possible, but I don't suspect so. All of these faults on the misfires are related to uh, the bank one, which is cylinder one through four. That's going to be on the passenger side of the engine. It's likely because we also have the issue with the cam adjuster that was a previous fault. So that is possibly what's going on. Ooh, control circuit for motor and transfer case, short to plus intermittent. Nah, hopefully that's not a big deal. So most of these faults are not something that I'm gonna be majorly worried about. We are going to be focusing on the ones in the engine control module. Those are the ones we're gonna tackle, see if we can address them. Again, I'm, I'm leaning towards cam adjuster related issues, but for all we know, this thing has jumped time and it needs a cylinder head on the passenger side of the engine. Make sure you follow along. We will be going further into detail about what we find in this vehicle as we progress through repairing it. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it. Listen to this beast. Oh yeah. Sweet cam, bro.